Uh, we're back with the politics lead and new details about the all-out hostility between two of President Trump's top officials, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and National Security Advisor Ambassador John Bolton. This comes as the U.S. is involved in aiding the Bahamas after deadly Hurricane Dorian and Iran is ramping up nuclear development and Russia is flexing its military muscle in Europe and the trade war with China is causing issues and North Korea is regularly testing new missiles and on and on. As CNN's Caitlin Collins now reports for us, even amidst all these conflicts and international challenges, the president's top two advisors on these issues, Bolton and Pompeo, recently didn't speak for weeks. CNN has learned long simmering tensions in the president's national security team have turned into all out hostility. Three sources say National Security Advisor John Bolton and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo rarely speak to each other outside formal meetings and recently went weeks without talking at all. I like watching it. I like seeing it. It's a big change from their old relationship when the two would meet with Vice President Mike Pence before going to the president on a foreign policy move. While they still see eye to eye on the issues, Trump sees them differently. Mike Pompeo, we have a uh, very similar thought process. I actually temper John, which is pretty amazing. The president claims he doesn't mind the chaos. I like conflict. I like having two people with different points of view. But aides say the breakdown has left communication between the White House and State Department to subordinates at a time when the U.S. is facing multiple foreign policy tests. They may not be speaking, but Bolton is keeping a close eye on the Secretary of State's job while sources say Pompeo has his eye on an open Senate seat in Kansas. I'm flattered when people say Mike could be a good United States senator representing Kansas. And as the White House is trying to downplay concerns about the economy, the new August jobs report revealing that hiring slowed last month. But Trump seems to be more focused on being right than the latest jobs report. He's now on day six of insisting Alabama was in the path of Hurricane Dorian and is now suggesting reporters should apologize to him, claiming this nonsense has never happened to another president. Now, Jake, the thing about this breakdown in communication between Pompeo and Bolton is that they still agree on a lot of the issues at their core. What's different is the way they approach President Trump. Hmm. Caitlin Collins, thanks so much. Uh, let's chew over all of this. Jen Psaki, let me start with you. As someone who served in both the State Department and the White House, how concerning is it if the National Security Advisor in the White House and the Secretary of State don't have a good working relationship? Well, in a normal White House, uh, the National Security Advisor is really the coordinator of the entire national security team. So they're not a person who would be negotiating deals typically or traveling a lot. Sometimes they travel a bit. Uh, but the breakdown is a, is a reflection of the dysfunction here, right? Um, so if Pompeo and uh, and uh, if they're not talking at all, if Bolton and Pompeo are not talking at all, it means they're not having kind of conversations after national security meetings. They're not having phone calls where they're saying, where do we go with this? What do you think of this crisis? That's a huge problem. Though reading this story, I think what, what struck out to me was the fact that the, the isolation of Bolton, because Pompeo clearly has an in to President Trump. I mean, we've seen that. Typically, the national security advisor is, is the most powerful in the sense that they have the ear of the president. They can walk into the Oval anytime. They know what they're thinking. They speak on their behalf. Mm -hmm. uh, that certainly was the case in the White House I worked in. Uh, this reflects his isolation, uh, and that was interesting to me. You worked in uh, the Bush senior quail White House. Uh, what do you make of all this? I mean, uh, certainly the Reagan White House had some uh, competing uh, personalities. People didn't get along, especially with the first lady at the time. Uh, but how significant is this for the country and for the stakes? I mean, usually it is about something, the, the dispute's about something real. So Weinberger and Schultz, Secretary of Defense and State under Reagan, had actual different views on some key issues, arms control, negotiations and other things. This seems to be entirely personal about who has more access to the president. Uh, they don't seem to actually differ that much on most issues. But the dysfunction is deep. I've talked to a few people who are, have been in or are close to people who are in the White House and in state and defense. Uh, and, I mean, it, the people are just throwing their arms up. There's no process. There's no, there are no interagency meetings. I mean, you can make fun of these things. They're overdone, probably, by those of us who have been in Washington a long time. You don't need to have quite as many of them as they sometimes have been in past administrations. But it is kind of important when you're dealing with Iran and Afghanistan and Russia and China and Venezuela, et cetera, to have some coherent policymaking and to be coordinating state and defense and CIA. And there's apparently none of that. I mean, I really think 
almost literally none of that is happening now. I, one buried in the story is that Mick Mulvaney, the acting chief of staff, has his own senior national security advisor. Because Mulvaney and Bolton don't get along. And so this guy who worked in the National Security Council, I guess, and or I don't know if he ever worked at the NSC, but who has some Hill background in, in defense and foreign policy is working for Mulvaney. So. And, and uh, but this is, the president likes dysfunction. Uh, he wouldn't put it that way. He'd say he likes competing view, uh, viewpoints. But we saw this on the campaign. Yeah, he does. And I don't think he really cares that there's not a process or there aren't interagency meetings. I also don't think that we should be that surprised that John Bolton may not be getting along with people in the White House. <laughs> I mean, we kind of knew that this is what was going to happen when they brought him in. So that in and of itself was not surprising. The president was warned about that when he was considering bringing him on, that he tends to you know, rub people the wrong way. So I don't, I don't think that that's a shock. And I just don't think that this is the kind of thing that bothers the president. The things that bother him are when people are taking credit for his accomplishments or when people are telling him you know, that you said Alabama was in the path of the storm and it wasn't really when they're challenging his sort of dominance yeah. over, over the narrative. But if he's like you guys, are all fighting amongst each other like fine go for it whoever wins out that's whose opinion you know like gets to be number one with the president but although ultimately he'll do whatever he wants to that point there isn't there doesn't seem to be anybody challenging the president on that other than the media and the facts uh Tulu, you were part of a team that, that broke the fact that president trump is indeed the one <laughs> who with his sharpie pen tried to make it look as though the path of the hurricane at one point was projected to go right into alabama which obviously that was the worst you know, graphic portrayal I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, while, um, while other people within the administration are fighting over Afghanistan and Iran and China, the president is obsessed over very minor slights, whether it's attacking his former aide, Anthony Scaramucci, or, you know, drawing Sharpie on, on a map to say the hurricane was actually going to Alabama uh, when it wasn't. The president is focused on a lot of these minor issues, and some of his aides are concerned that he's so focused and so obsessed with some of these issues that don't really matter at the end of the day. But for days on end, he gets r riled up about media coverage and about things that are, are relatively minor in the grand scheme of things. And uh, while that's happening, that allows there to be all of this infighting within the administration over some of the major issues, because they know that when they finally get the president's attention, he can easily be swayed uh, on things that are more important than the thing that he's focusing on at the moment. And, and Bill, I, I want to get your I want to get your reaction because the Trump campaign today uh, is promoting a magic marker, a sharp, <laughs> sharpie of their own that you can buy from their website. As our fact checker Daniel Dale uh, put it, this seems to be a first. The Trump campaign selling memorabilia of its own dishonesty. Yeah, that's good. I think the Joe Walsh's campaign is selling a Sharpie with don't lie on it. So everyone's, uh, I hope Sharpie is doing well, I guess, out of this. You, Sharpie, they, yeah. they owe you a dinner somewhere, you know, for publicizing the fact that this, you know, it's all kind of funny, except, I mean, we do, act, American foreign policy is, is pretty important. And the president may think it's amusing to have all these people jostling around, but what do you do if you're a serious, you know, a country, either, a well, an ally or, I mean, it really is, it's really bad. Not to mention the fact that there's a whole peace deal with uh, the Taliban and the Afghan government that's coming down the pike, and we don't know what's in there or whether or not anybody in the White House is going to sign off. 